Next, Purdue. Uh, it's uh, what the Big Ten's all about. Uh, no easy games. Uh, you see, uh, I think we got a first-hand example of why Michigan State was picked number one in the country preseason. I think we saw firsthand why Cassius Winston was, was picked as player of the year nationally. And uh, <clears throat> when the ball doesn't go in, uh, there's challenges, and uh, you're not you're not going to win. Uh, the game before we made 11 threes, and we shot we shot the ball extremely well in in shoot around, and um, you know we had one of those nights. We were 17 of 35 um, in the paint, uh, within four to five feet, and then uh, obviously the three point shooting was was uh, was not good, and you're not going to win. Uh, any place, let alone against the best team in, in uh, one of the best teams in the country. Uh, but um, you know, bounce back. That's one of the great things about basketball, and it's one of the great things about the Big Ten. Is almost all of our teams are in the Ken Palm or the net in the top 40, and you get a, get a chance to go do it again and and uh, and grow. We unfortunately we, we suffered a tough loss at Maryland. Uh, a heartbreaker, and we turned around three nights later and beat Michigan. And, and that's what this league affords you is, a, is another opportunity to go do something uh, great and, and uh, move forward. It's about uh, avoiding the highs and lows and, and staying on a level playing field, and that's, uh, uh, that's the beauty of getting back into practice. Uh, the next day is, you know, these guys are pretty resilient. We're going to go to practice and, and uh, uh, shake that off. So. Uh, Purdue's very, very good. Uh, they're, they're one of the top defensive teams, uh, not only in our conference, but in the country. Uh, obviously, a team that has some new roles, losing Carson Edwards and Klein and, and uh, some of the best players in that sports <coughs> history. So, a uh, little more inside-oriented team. Uh, it's been interesting and fun to watch Matt Harms. I uh, saw him in high school a lot, and to see his growth and development, a guy had 26 the other night, now he's a junior, but uh, obviously got some, uh, he's got size at 7'3". Uh, Williams has, um, has become extremely effective, uh, and then, uh, you know, they're getting really, really good guard play, and, and uh, uh, Stefanovic is one of the elite shooters, I think, if you ever want to do a, a, uh, a video and teach, teach a young kid how to shoot, you, uh, you might want to pull him up. But, uh, uh, but yeah, we've, got a, we've got, a, got a great opportunity, great challenge, and, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll have our hands full, that's for sure. Joy. Brad, I felt like last season defending Harms at Purdue, it was a challenge. I mean, you didn't have a lot of size in the post. You do now. How much does that change things with the two big guys out there who can kind of counter them? Yeah, there are other guys had a little to do with that as well, the way we tried to guard them. Uh, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, the year before when they had Haas inside and they were pretty big, uh, we did a great job on Haas and, and Carson got 40. Uh, it's a sign of pretty good basketball team when you've got that kind of balance. And, and uh, uh, Harms has developed, uh, developed tremendously from the offensive side of it. He's, uh, he's a guy who's stepping out and shooting threes in his first year. Uh, he wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't doing that. Now he's, I think, 6 of 16 on the year from the three. He's a guy that's a threat. He made some of those last year against us. Uh, but um, yeah, he's a, he's a very gifted player. <clears throat> Alan said uh, Thursday night that he just he feels like he's playing with more confidence. And how has that maybe you know, elevated or, or changed his game? Just and when he's maybe mentally locked in. With yeah, confidence is the most powerful tool we have or skill. I, I you know I don't know what you want to call it. It's a mental approach that allows you to do things that um, get you beyond your normal level. And uh, uh, you know the, the one thing I. Adam plays with a motor. I mean, when, it, when people want me to describe Alan, it's motor, motor, motor. I mean, he just plays so hard. And, he, and he's, he's carefree. Uh, he's got great swagger. And that's 
you know, that, that confidence is coming from minutes and it's coming from success on the court. And, and, you know, now he's finding out, hey, I can go get rebounds against anybody. I can, I can make baskets against anybody and I can be a productive guy. And, and uh, uh, you know, with that, uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, and that kind of confidence, we're going to see uh, his game continue to blossom. <clears throat> Brent, how concerned are you, if at all, about offensive production from the four spot? I, I mean, it's it's. What do you what do you deem production? Well, Points. I guess, yeah. I mean, I mean, some nights you get them, some nights you don't. Uh, you know, it's. I think it's one of those things that. Uh, you know, we'd like to be able to say that every night you're going to get 25 points from from a certain spot. It, it's not that. It's not necessarily that way. Um, I think that, uh, uh, you know, Jordy's been one of our top assist guys. He's been a guy that's been able to step out and make some threes. I think we're, we've, we've got to do a better job of finding ways to create post-up opportunities for him. Uh, but um, uh, Kipper's, you know, Kipper's a guy that's, that's shown and he can do some things offensively. So it's not something I worry about. Uh, you know. We, Every game, there's a there's a schematic part to a game that you have to adjust to or or, or handle a little differently, uh, and we'll adjust accordingly. Brad, what do you see when you look at Purdue and you specifically look at No Gel Eastern? Because I think the term winning plays can become cliche-ish, but he seems to make a lot of them. If that's a term. Well, I mean, you see a tremendous size, and 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 a highly superior athlete. Um, I mean, if, if you want to if you want to measure guys for vertical jumps and speed and do all of that, I mean, you can go put him up against probably any athlete on their campus, and, and he's going to rank in that top, uh, you know, that top portion. I mean, there's some dunks from from him early in the season in transition. I mean, he's just inside the free throw line, leaving the dunk, uh, and yet you look at his shooting numbers and you see some some different holes, but. Uh, elite, elite hands, great quickness with his hands, great length, and uh, and he's a great competitor. And he's a guy that uh, that Payne has a lot of a lot of abilities with, uh, capabilities with, in terms of uh, being able to guard one through four. And uh, those guys are those guys are very rare. Where do you think this team's mentality is at with the three point struggles, and do you approach it any differently in practice or preparation? Just keep shooting. Them. We made 11 the night before. I, I, you know, the game before. I, I, you have a night, and it's like walking through the line, and, and Tom says, he goes, you just had our Duke game. You know, and you know, I look up at the 12-minute mark, and we're, they're shooting 34%, and we're, you know, we're with, trying to withstand their run, and, and some nights the ball doesn't go in. Uh, I don't make too much out of it. I, I you know, Trent Frazier's a good shooter. He got good looks. I loved our looks. I loved Io had three great looks that uh, that, he, that he makes, and uh, uh, you know, so it's it's not something that we, you know, we just keep shooting balls and and, and practicing them, and and uh, you know, guys got to step up and make them. After watching the film, is there anything that stood out with Kofi, uh, and anything that he needs to change, or anything like that? I, you know, I think the one thing we just we talked with with Kof about is 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 using his frame, using his body, and and, and I mean hitting people, and uh, uh, and I'm not saying pushing and shoving. There's a way you get into people's legs, and and uh, it was for whatever reason it was a game he didn't do that. He had been doing that uh, at a much better rate, and, and he's got to be consistent with you know when you play. Bingham, for example, has tremendous, tremendous length, and, and yet Kofi's got some physicality on him. If you don't hit him, you negate that. I mean, you, you, you don't negate that. Excuse me. You, there's no sense being 290 pounds if you're not going to go hit it. And uh, well, that was one of the biggest things. And, and uh, you know, then I thought he got a little bit rushed, you know, offensively. Um, but, uh, you know, again, he's a freshman. He's 13 games into his into his career and, and uh, you know, he still had nine rebounds in 19 minutes or whatever he played. Alan maybe came in with the 
label as a shooter, but how important has maybe his growth been, you know, ball in hand, uh, attacking the basket? Well, I think the one thing that he's he's grown in that area. You know, I think Allen's always been a guy that was that was. Um, we knew he was a, a rebounder. I think he had 18 rebounds or 19 rebounds in the state championship game. We, we knew he was capable of doing that. I think he's. Uh, everybody knew he was a good shooter, um, and it's still something he's got to continually work with and grow. But his confidence, again, uh, as you mentioned earlier, his confidence has allowed him to do that. It's something he hasn't had to do as much here, uh, but uh, but now he's got he's got the confidence to do it. He did it in high school, and and he's you know he's he's staying in his lane. Last year he tried doing it a little bit too much and. And uh, it was almost awkward. Like now he's just playing, and it's 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 at the right times and it's at the right moments, and uh, that that comes from confidence. How unique are his rebounding instincts? He's not the tallest guy, but it seems like you look up and it's scary. Yeah. It's scary. I've, I've I've been around a few. Uh, Jeffrey Carroll at Oklahoma State was a guy that averaged you know seven one from the wing spot. Was a was an elite rebounder uh, at that spot, and and you know the hard part. Is just getting him to go. Well, with him, it's it's he goes, and it was the same thing with Jeff. Uh, they just went and, and they had a nose for it. They tracked it down, and I mean, he made a play from the opposite corner in front of their bench at Michigan State, and, and got the ball outside the paint in front of their bench. And, and I thought Tom was going to throw his shoulder out um, on that play. But it's just tremendous effort, and it's mo it's a it's a tremendous motor. It's a, it's a gift. Uh, we demand that they go, but it's a gift what uh, what he does. College, Brad, I think you've been asked this before, but did the new line this year change anything you yeah. guys did? And it seems like percentages are down all across the country. And it, did it affect how you guys approach what you guys do offensively? I don't think it's affected the approach. Our, our personnel's probably had more to do with our with our approach, but uh, <coughs> as we've seen the the line and the the, the Lack of progress, I guess, or progress throughout the course of a season. I think you're, you're. It's fair to say you're probably seeing a, a player and a half, maybe be covered differently on the defensive end. Uh, you know, those guys who were 31, 32 percent last year, you paid attention to, are now down, you know, in the mid 20s, and you're probably okay. Go ahead and go ahead and get those off. Um, you know, there's that guy that's been 35 or 36, it's down to 31 or 32, and you're paying attention, but you're, okay. You know, those are the guys that are, are, you know, the marginal guys that probably aren't shooting it as well. And, and I think it's affecting the way teams play defensively, there's no doubt. And uh, that's what the line was meant to do. And, uh, you know, we'll grow into into that distance. Uh, everybody talks about that foot and a half and whatever. It's a big, it's a big, big difference for some guys. And uh, uh, you know, over the course of time, we'll grow into it, but it, but it, there's no doubt it's having some effect. Any update on Ben's status? Still out with a foot. Uh, he's got a little soreness in it, and, and they've they've just put him in a boot to uh, help that healing process and stop any further damage being done. So he's not practicing, but he will not play normal. Was that the same injury he had over the summer? No, no. Other leg, different part of his body. With Allen, there's some tone-setting qualities that what he's bringing in his role. I think you told us before you don't care about starting lineups, but do you consider that at all with what he brings and how he kind of sets the tone when he's on the floor? I like what he does on the bench. I mean, shoot, he's up there dapping everybody up. You know, he is a very active talker um, and, and uh, communicator. Uh, I love what he's bringing because it, it's it's a it's a Tremendous energy. You're bringing a high motor guy off the bench who's also capable of making uh, making a lot of shots and making baskets, and uh, that's that's the productivity that uh, that I'm really excited about. You bring him with Dre, uh, you know, Kip, Tev. You bring those guys off the bench, and we're starting to start to feel like we're we're getting some some productivity on the offensive end uh, and the glass as well. Thank you.